and thank you for joining us for the Home Instead Aging Well series, Culinary Edition. My name is Daphne Cook, and we are joining you from the Metropolitan Utilities District Culinary Theater. Today, we are talking about all things holiday. With Halloween behind us, many are thinking about the holidays. And while we may have to rethink things a bit due to what's happening right now, with a little ingenuity and creativity, we can have a lot of fun and still have those warm feelings of togetherness. So here to talk about all things comfort and togetherness, we have Chef Chase Grove, our food science expert, and Lakeland Hogan, Hogan, a gerontologist and caregiver advocate for Home Instead. I'd like to thank you both for being here today. It feels so great to be getting into the holiday spirit. Chef Chase, we're gonna start with you first because you have a delicious looking chicken there. Yep. And so could you tell us about what you're gonna to make today? So when I was trying to think about what we should make as we're approaching the holidays, I wanted to think about what is classic to Thanksgiving, which when I think about it, it's all this and that's like a bunch of sides, stuffing, gratins, roasted bird, all these different things. And it means a little different to everyone depending where they grew up or who they grew up around. So uh, I wanted to kind of refine that into something that's more executable, more accomplishable for a uh, shorter time and less products. Because there's just so much that goes to the feast. So let's figure out how to get the things we love in the feast smaller. So I chose carrots polonaise with a roasted chicken. And I'm a big fan of taking a little bit of a, it's not a cheat, it's just a time saver, a uh, rotisserie chicken or something that's been roasted for you. Then we're gonna talk about how to build that carrot polonaise to go with it and it'll feel very festive. I love that idea of starting with the rotisserie chicken because sometimes you have all the ingredients, but it's the end of the day, you're tired, it feels a little I, overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And so it's like not even uh, like a cheat, it's just like taking care of yourself, it's yeah. self-care. <laughs> exactly. That uh, I've noticed as I talk to people uh, that are interested in cooking and trying to build their repertoire, going from a raw protein to a cooked protein is the scariest thing. So let's figure out how to make the meal by dodging that for the moment, and then you can accomplish that goal later down the road. Let me ask you something about this chicken before we get started, because this chicken looks very inviting. Mm -hmm. And when I see uh, rotisserie chickens, they look good. Yeah. They taste good. But this one looks inviting. So did you do a little something to this chicken? This one was particularly uh, handled with care. It was uh, from a raw state to a cooked state by uh, our chefs here in house. So they seasoned the exterior nicely. They uh, oiled it. So as it cooked up, the skin is like crispy and brittle. Uh, and then they also filled it with some, what I call mirepoix. So just some veggies to kind of bolster the flavor as it slow roasted. Yeah, the, the skin does look quite uh, crispy and delicious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll have some skin snacks later, I promise. Yay, woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. So what are you gonna get started on? Yeah, so I'm gonna uh, jump right in on the carrot polonaise and I'll kind of do a few minutes of work and then we'll discuss some different topics. I'll kind of jump in here and there. Then we'll circle back and I'll recap each like few minutes of work that I do. That sounds amazing, thank you so much. Now Lakeland, you are a gerontologist and caregiver advocate. So can you talk yes. a little bit about what that means? Yeah, a gerontologist is someone who studies the aging process. So I went to school for it. It is a degree that you can earn at the University of Nebraska Omaha is where I studied. Um, and so I have really learned all aspects of aging, you know, uh, the emotional side, the physical side, the spiritual side of aging. There's I think that's why I love this field is it's so complex. There's so much that goes into the aging process and everyone ages differently. Uh, we're all on our own aging journey. Um, and then my caregiver advocate hat, we know that family members are often the first to take on the care of their aging loved one. Uh, and there's a lot that goes into that. Um, a lot of challenges, a lot of issues. Uh, so I am an advocate for those individuals as well. And I love doing educational um, talks and seminars. That's a big part of what I get to do and so just so excited to be here today and also combining another love of mine, cooking. Yes. Uh, with talking about aging, I think this is the best day of my week for sure. <laughs> this is the best day of your week and I guarantee this will be the best smelling day <laughs> Ooh, yes. of your week as well. 
Well, you talked a little bit about spiritual and emotional. So how do those things come into play, particularly around the holidays? Yeah, well, I think the holidays, at least for me, and I know for many people, brings about a lot of different emotions. Uh, there's a lot of reminiscing that happens during the holidays. I, it makes me think back to childhood and time spent with my grandparents and family at those times. Uh, but it can also be sad for some folks that have lost a loved one. Uh, maybe uh, they've moved away. And so there's a, a wide range of emotions that occur. Uh, and then with the holidays also, the spiritual component, for many, it is a religious holiday, especially when we go into kind of the Christmas season or uh, we have Hanukkah coming up. Uh, so there is that spirituality aspect too that allows us to express our spirituality and uh, give thanks in various ways. So uh, again, so many uh, complexities around the aging process, especially at the holiday time, it brings about all those emotions. Well, and when we think about it, as we look at the aging people who may be in our family, we're used to seeing them a certain way and seeing them celebrate a certain way. I mean, it could be dad climbing up on the roof to, to put up light, mm -hmm. or it could be mom cooking and maybe that shifted a little bit. So can you talk a little bit about that adjustment and meeting our loved ones where they are? Most certainly. I think that's a really great point. You know, as we age, we, we want to likely engage in all of those traditions and activities that we've done all of our lives, but maybe there is a mobility issue or maybe we just get a little more fatigued uh, than normal. And so, you know, spending all day in a kitchen cooking that holiday meal might seem overwhelming um, or, right, getting up on that ladder might not be feasible this year. So as families are celebrating or if you yourself, you might think, um, how can I simplify things this year? Because uh, sometimes simple is, is the best way to go about it. Um, and so maybe instead of climbing on the ladder to decorate the whole house, maybe we just decorate the bushes. Maybe we get some of those fun yard blow-ups or yard ornaments around Christmas to still make things festive. Um, or instead of mom, dad, grandma, grandpa preparing the whole meal, maybe they focus on one or two things and then everyone chips in to help bring that meal together. Uh, or just, you know, like we're doing, invite your loved one to sit with you as you cook, maybe give them a few of the cooking tasks uh, just so that they're not on their feet all day um, making something. Uh, everyone can kind of pitch in and make it a, still an enjoyable festive occasion. And as we're talking about traditions too, it might just be an opportunity to get that family recipe from your loved one. Oh yeah, I think that that is such an important point because there are so many family recipes, even within my own family, that I know have not been written down. I know some people in my family are kind of dump cooks where they dump a little of this and a little <laughs> of that, and it tastes great every time. Um, so it's, it's a great time to collect those recipes or watch grandma or grandpa put that recipe together and try to jot it down so it can be passed on from generation to generation because I know there's several staples, at least in my household um, or my family, that we expect to be at every Christmas meal and I want, I want that to continue for sure. Absolutely. It's an easy way to kind of set the mood as well. Yeah. Certainly, yeah. I, I think food, one of the great things about food is that it brings people together. So many conversations, at least in my household, happened around uh, a family meal, around a table. Um, and so I think the holidays also bring about great opportunities to you know, set the mood um, for maybe more serious conversations, to reminisce about um, you know, special times in our lives. And um, really, it can, it can make those conversations more inviting when you have a plate of something yummy and delicious in front of you. Yeah, there's something about eating delicious food mm -hmm. that makes a difficult conversation a little bit easier yes. to have. And having those conversations about what someone might want in particular mm -hmm. situations is just a way to make things easier on everyone in the future. Yeah, most certainly. Well, and I know at the holiday time, sometimes people are seeing their loved ones for the first time in a while, especially with the pandemic. Um, and so often it's a time where maybe a, an adult child is seeing their loved one uh, in their living environment and maybe noticing that there, there are some changes happening. Uh, maybe there is some care that's needed, some extra support that's needed to help them to continue to be independent in their environment. So these holiday times can be a time where we can have those conversations. You know, uh, does your loved one maybe need a little bit of home care services like we provide at home instead? Or uh, are there some modifications that should be made to the home to help
help, again, keep the environment safe. And, and so these holiday times can provide opportunities to kind of make those observations and then have those discussions. Um, I just want to say that it smells amazing it smell in here. So good. There's right? garlic <laughs> and oh. there's the citrus, this burst of citrus. It just is, it smells like, I guess this is what heaven smells like maybe. <laughs> right? I think of the holidays as citrus. That's coming in the season then. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's not local to where we live, but it's local to other people and you just want to value that product uh, when it's best. So I love cooking seasonal. It just makes sense on the buck too. Mm -hmm. They're going to be a little cheaper in season than out of season. Uh, and I remembered you saying uh, that kind of discussion around the traditional meals mm -hmm. uh, and components of these meals. And it, it spurred a thought that a lot of that recall of past uh, memories mm -hmm. happens easier when there's an aroma that's tied to it. Yes. That you smell mm -hmm. orange and garlic and you think of something mm -hmm. that happened in your past that you normally wouldn't recall and be able to share. So I love connecting that food to speaking about things that you didn't even think you had in there mm -hmm. and it just pops up. Well, Chef Tish, you were talking a little bit about seasonal. What mm -hmm. are some of the things that are in season right now? Yeah, so uh, citrus is huge, uh, particularly oranges. And then we start getting more uh, root vegetables coming into season as they were harvested through fall. I mean, the remnants of apples for apple pie and the remnants of sweet potatoes, beets, other root vegetables like carrots that are stored through the winter after harvest. So that's great, uh, cheap, quality product for most of the winter. Um, of course, the poultry season is also coming to an mm -hmm. end and uh, yielding product for us. So that's kind of why Thanksgiving has turned into what we know it to be. Fantastic. Chef Chase, I need your professional advice because Please. This time of year, every Thanksgiving, I'm, I'm having a smaller Thanksgiving this year. Mm -hmm. And so I always say, okay, I'm just gonna make these couple of things. And then I always have this vision in my head of how it's gonna be these small servings. And then I'm cooking <laughs> for like a family of 16. We've got food for the week and I've just completely missed my goal. Right, that, uh, I mean, part of what we think of as this holiday meal is kind of feasting, mm -hmm. a little bit of over the topness. Uh, but if at some point you got to tone that back, right? You can't always be making for infinite amount of people that'll last weeks of meals. It's not practical. So I like taking miniatures of what we're doing. Like instead of doing a big turkey, do a little chicken. Instead of mm -hmm. doing this uh, pounds and pounds of this veg, uh, maybe do a mix of the veg that you previously had as separate sides as one component and then just shrink your recipes down. Uh, but I do think you need to save a few leftovers. Otherwise, it doesn't feel like the yeah. feast right. anymore. At least one meal. Right. Yeah. You, have, you have to have the post-Thanksgiving turkey sandwich. There yes. it is. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, how could it be Thanksgiving without that? Well, Lakeland, you had mentioned that right now um, there are some aspects that we need to think about, especially mm -hmm. some refer it to it as post-pandemic. I mean, we're in the pandemic. I mean, just some different things to keep in mind of this holiday, some basic things that um, don't take a lot of time that could make the holiday safe for everyone, such as maybe just getting a flu shot and yeah. uh, wearing a mask. Yes, those are two things that you can do that are, that are easy, simple, that can make a holiday gathering um, more enjoyable for everyone. And I think too, just having a conversation around people's comfort levels. Um, hopefully on Thanksgiving day here in Nebraska, it'll be nice out, but you never know with our Nebraska weather. Uh, and the CDC does say that, you know, outdoor activities, uh, you don't necessarily have to wear a mask. It's probably one of the safer environments to have a group gathering. So if you can incorporate an out outdoor aspect to your gathering, that's great. Uh, and if you're still not able to gather in person, we can still utilize things like Zoom um, for a virtual get together. Um, just to see each other and connect. I know one of the last holidays, uh, our family, we connected with our California family that we normally don't see on, on the holiday, but because of Zoom and everyone was becoming more familiar, we got to Zoom with our California cousins and people took kind of turns going and sitting down and chatting and it really added to the whole family gathering uh, and made it extra special that year. So there are still things we can do uh, to be mindful of, of everyone's comfort level, uh, again, wearing those masks. And um, I think communication also is also an important piece of that, just kind of talking it through. Uh, maybe you do maintain six feet of distance. Maybe that's important to you, and maybe you can set up, uh, you know, 
each individual family sits together. Um, the sister and her husband and kids sit here, and the brother and his husband or wife and, and kids sit there, uh, just to keep people a little separated. That could be another option. Uh, so lots of things to consider. Yeah, it sounds like just trying things a little bit different. You mentioned yeah. Zoom. So uh, me and all my siblings, uh, my family, we got together for Zoom. And my youngest brother, who's young and hip, you know, he <laughs> said that he didn't realize how much he missed everyone. And he had a really great time on the Zoom and he wasn't expecting that. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, I think that we, especially now, about two two years into this, I think we all um, are just more comfortable with Zoom. And so it is. it can be really fun and enjoyable. And I've also seen families make uh, games out of a Zoom environment, maybe mm -hmm. trivia, or maybe you know sharing old photos and saying like, hey, do you remember this memory? Or can you guess who's in this picture? It just makes it fun uh, and gets people talking. And you had mentioned, like, Lynn, really just having that open conversation about everyone's comfort level. Um, and just addressing that. So it's not really a right or wrong, it's just you might have someone who is only comfortable via Zoom, someone who's comfortable with the mask, and just having those conversations with your loved ones. Yeah, absolutely, and I think then you open it up so people don't feel awkward if they show up in their mask. You have the opportunity ahead of time to say, hey, you know, everyone's welcome. If you don't feel comfortable, we could set up a Zoom link, and if you wanna come but wear your mask, that's awesome, we, we will love to have you. Just kind of creating that welcoming environment. And I think sometimes conversations around the holidays can already get a little tense. You, mm -hmm. you We hear mm -hmm. anecdotes about that a lot. And, and so this is kind of one uh, area that could become tense unless you're proactive about it and kind of make it uh, a more approachable conversation for everyone. And then you can, you can go right to those reminiscing and story sharing and, and that having fun um, and hopefully avoid some, some of that conflict that could potentially arise. Now, Chef Chase, I see yes. that you are peeling carrots, so I have a question for yes, you. Yes, please. Is peeling carrots, is that a flavor thing or an aesthetic thing? Mm, that's a good question. That uh, even though chefs kind of go back and forth and debate it, that uh, I peel because I just find it a little easier than scrubbing. But mm -hmm. some sort of peeling or scrubbing is good because, I mean, it was a root vegetable that was with soil, so we want to make sure that we're removing anything that would be a contaminant. Mm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that. So there are some things, some ways to uh, enjoy the holiday that don't cost a lot of money. We've talked about Zoom. Um, uh, a new thing that I discovered is taking a virtual vacation. Ooh, that sounds And so fun. people are paying to take classes to learn about a place far away. That's just a fun activity. Oh, that is really neat. I think that that is a great way to kind of see the world uh, from the comfort of your living room. Uh, and again, can bring about some great conversation. I myself am a history buff, so I would probably want to go to like the Rome Coliseum and learn all about that. I think that that would be such a fun experience to share as a group of people that might not otherwise get the chance to travel together. And then, hey, maybe in the future it could lead to traveling together to the place that Absolutely. you had the virtual vacation to. Oh, how fun would that be? And then you already kind of know a little bit of the background and the history, and then you can really immerse yourself in the culture. I think that sounds like a lot of fun. So let's talk a little bit about caregivers. Is this a particularly stressful time of year for caregivers? Any tips for caregivers? Yeah. Yeah, it, it certainly can. I think it can be stressful for all of us uh, at times, trying to you know get the meal together, get all the gifts, and uh, make sure that everyone's having a good time and you're making memories. Uh, and so for caregivers, you throw in you know all of those activities to their regular kind of caregiving duties, and it can be really stressful. But again, I think it goes back to simplifying. That's one tip where where caregivers can simplify those activities and and really enjoy the time uh, spent with loved ones as opposed to kind of uh, all the busyness that that could be occurring at that time. Uh, also, meeting your loved one where they're at. I mentioned earlier, you know, finding a way to involve their loved one in the activity um, can be a great way to spend time together. And then not being afraid to ask for help. I know family caregivers often want to do everything themselves or feel like they're, they're a burden if they ask someone to help. Um, but especially this time of year, there's so many things that you can ask people to help with, whether it's you know, bringing a side dish or maybe if uh, they're going to the grocery store, could, could you pick up a few extra items for me? Or you know, I really need to get my holiday shopping done, could you come over and be with my loved one uh, while I go out and about? 
It's also a great time to look into services like, like we provide at home instead. Uh, we could come in and, and be with your loved one or help to kind of do some of those errands. Uh, our caregivers are also great cooks too, so they could help with some of the holiday <laughs> cooking even. Uh, and we're always hiring great caregivers. So if you're watching and, and have a passion for helping others, we would love for you to apply at homeinstead.com slash jobs. And you can be a caregiver apparently at any age because you had a caregiver who was in her 90s. Yes, a <laughs> professional caregiver in her 90s. She recently retired. Um, she, she just loved to help people. She was in great physical health herself. She was often older than the clients she was serving. <laughs> um, but she, you know, she related really well to, to her clients and they just loved her. Uh, and so we miss her dearly. Uh, but you can, we also have fantastic caregivers that are, you know, college age students who are maybe going through nursing school, social work, going to school to be a social worker, and they can gain really valuable uh, job experience from, from this role. Uh, so really, any age can be a, a great caregiver um, and, and really make a difference in the life of, of an older adult. Well, at Lakeland, before, a little bit ago, you talked about simplifying. And I love that idea, and asking for help, particularly if you're a caregiver. And I love that idea because um, this time of year, the Hallmark movies come on, and so um, real life doesn't really look like a Hallmark movie. <laughs> no. no, and I, as much as a lot of us would try to make our homes look that beautiful and make all the activities picture perfect, it doesn't always go that way. And so I think another thing to keep in mind is, you know, don't be afraid to, you know, laugh at your laugh at the situation. Involve humor. Uh, don't take yourself so seriously. Simplify those activities. It doesn't it doesn't have to, you know, look like the Pinterest board or, um, you know, what the beautiful videos that you see on Facebook. Find activities that you're going to enjoy, that your family will enjoy, um, and make it fun and simple and easy. Yeah, and it just leads to those memories. I remember yeah. one time my kids were making cookies unassisted. And my son mixed up the cumin for the cinnamon. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, it was no. a very interesting, <laughs> richly flavored, I can uh, Latin inspired <laughs> mm -hmm. cookie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so in those moments, you just you kind of have to laugh. You know, um, if, if something goes uh, awry, then you, it just it makes those memories. Yes, I, I remember memories of childhood that that involved a funny story or a mishap. And those are more memorable almost than the oh, Christmases absolutely. that went went perfectly. Now, Chef Chase, mm -hmm. you are making carrots polonaise. Yes. What is carrots polonaise? So it's uh, just kind of a fancy word for a variation on gratin. Ah. So uh, I mean, a lot of times the difference between someone thinking it's fine dining and home cooking is just a little word change. <laughs> so rather than a casserole, we're making polonaise. It sounds fancy. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're super, super similar. So I'm going to start by cooking a, a base. And you guys were smelling the breadcrumbs that I toasted, added some aromatics. So that'll be the top of what we know as gratin. Uh, so sauteed carrots. And I did just a really simple rustic cut. Just rolled the carrot and sliced. Rather than trying to do some like high precision, tricky knife cut, that's not really important. The important part is just having a product that we can cut and then eat easily afterwards. So uh, I just kind of rolled it and cut, slice, 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 saute it all up. Uh, butter, olive oil, they really do the same thing. Just transfer our heat into our food. Uh, and then I'm pulling the chicken from the bone, the dark meat, and I'm just gonna saute that in. Just lightly stew that, almost like I'm starting a soup, mm -hmm. but then I'm gonna cook it down a little bit and then just finish it with a few other things. Well, it does smell like Thanksgiving in here. It does. Right? <laughs> yeah, I smell that onion and garlic and, oh, it smells so yummy. And I love that rotisserie chicken makes it so easy. Mm -hmm. I, I even have a, a frozen chicken in my freezer and I've been thinking, what should I do with yeah. it? So now I have some good ideas on, on how to do that. And I, I guess, Chef, if someone's looking to like de-thaw their Thanksgiving bird or chicken, mm, good. what are yeah. some tips there? Because I know you can't, you can't wait till the day of. That's right. probably a little too late. <laughs> the, the big no-no is just don't put it in hot water, right? Okay. And the good choice is a refrigerator overnight, mm -hmm. maybe even two to three nights if you got a really big one. Okay. Um, but if you forget, you can leave it out on the counter for a little bit, kind of jump start it, and then put it in the fridge or run it under cold water if you're really in a, a panic, uh, okay. last minute. <laughs> cold water is good, you just want to make sure the food stays safe. Great. 
Chef Chase, you hear a lot of things about stuffing the bird, not stuffing mm -hmm. the bird. What can you tell us about stuffing the bird? So I find, I mean, that's where the stuffing dressing originated, right? It was to go to the interior of the bird to keep it moist, increase flavor. Uh, but it's kind of another step, a little bit of a hassle sometimes. So a lot of times our birds right now that you just purchase at the grocery store are already really well processed. So they're not going to go dry on you if you just roast them typically. I thought that was me. You're telling right? me they pre-prep the bird? <laughs> they help a little bit. They give just a little pinch of salt. <laughs> they store it just right. Uh, just to make sure that if you do make a 20 minute extra oven mistake, it's not going to kill the bird. Mm -hmm. uh, so the stuffing helps that. If you're really worried or like you have this habit of overcooking it, uh, stuffing will save you a few minutes of time and a little bit of moisture. Uh, but if you're kind of a no frills type of cook, just throw it in there. Uh, you don't really need it. If you put a little bit of oil, a little bit of seasoning, it'll get done and still be delicious. You just got to keep a closer eye on the time. Uh -huh. Well, we do have questions. And um, as I mentioned before, you can throw questions in at any time. So this is a question um, that says, for all of you, what are some of your favorite holiday dishes? Mm, that is a good one. For me, I love the green bean casserole with the crunchy top. Yes. And then anything with cranberry. I love, mm, love yep. cranberry. I even found a cranberry salsa that I put over like a cream cheese for an appetizer Ooh. with crackers or chips. Mm -hmm. Now it has become one of my kind of staple. That's kind of what I'm becoming known for in my family is that appetizer. That yep. sounds yummy. Yeah, it's delicious. Thank you for saying cranberry. It reminded me of that's the other good seasonal <laughs> fruit coming yes. in. That, the, whether it's the cranberry, uh, relish, salsa, jelly, uh, molded, like all of those kind of pull to someone's memory of Thanksgiving at some yeah. point. It's a, a great pop of acidity and flavor and sweetness. I always, it doesn't matter, um, every Thanksgiving and Christmas, I have to have the molded cranberry <laughs> yep. from the, it has to be in the shape of the yes. can. <laughs> it, it's sliding off the plate as I'm bringing it to the table. It has, that's what Classic. it has to be for me. Yep. Chef Chase, favorite uh, family holiday dish? Uh, you will find that I have a huge sweet tooth. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's such a huge sweet tooth that I want that sweetness while I'm eating like a dinner and not mm -hmm. just wait for dessert. So I'm a huge fan of quick breads, whether that's pumpkin bread mm. or spice bread, honey yeah. bread, all of those I love around this time of year. So yeah. for sure that with a nice slab of butter or whatever cranberry mm -hmm. fixing you might want, uh, that's my go-to. Well, my, one of my very favorite holiday dishes is a cornbread dressing. Mm, my yes. parents are from the South. My grandparents are from the South. And so it has a little sage uh, sausage, carrot, mm. or uh, celery, and onion, and mushroom, and thyme. And that, to me, and, and my kids all love it. And so with the glop of the cranberry, <laughs> <laughs> of the cranberry on it. Yum. That's that sounds so delicious. I'm getting, I'm getting hungry. And I it's smelling good in here. <laughs> Does everything smell so good? We have another question. Similar to the rotisserie chicken, what are some other time savers we can do for holiday cooking? Oh my gosh, perfect question. Yeah. Good. Uh, buying a stock, whether that's veggie, chicken, beef, uh, whatever you think will pair well with the recipe. Um, I mean, almost no one rolls their own stocks anymore at mm -hmm. home. If you do, that's amazing and uh, awesome. But if you go to buy stock at the grocery store to save that time, buy something that's low sodium. That's not necessarily a health uh, choice. I mean, it is a perk that way. It also lets you season your food and it keeps it from getting accidentally too salty. Mm -hmm. So you actually have less total sodium. You can season it yourself. Mm, nice. That's a great tip. Yeah. That's something that I uh, purchase a lot. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're talking about simplifying the holiday meals, which is amazing. And then I feel like there's also a way to just kind of shop smarter as well. Mm. Like how can we shop efficiently so we don't have a bunch of leftover fresh herbs because we only used a sprig? Yeah, the fresh herbs is a really hard one. Uh, that they're just overpriced and you might use a little bit mm -hmm. and then the rest just goes bad because you don't know what to use it on. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, 
I round my herb recipes up. If I really want a fresh herb, I just put an extra. Whatever I buy, I'll oh. just throw in. It's not gonna hurt it. Uh, if it has such a little amount that it feels silly to buy, then just omit it. Uh, it's not gonna make or break it. Or could you do dried? You could do dried. The catch on that is, if you do dried, it needs to go in earlier in the cooking. Oh, so kind of okay. look at what step it's on and move it a couple up. That makes sense. I also like to freeze my extra fresh herbs, mm -hmm. like my sprig of thyme or rosemary, and then I usually just put it into like a soup later. Mm -hmm. So yep. that's how I can justify in my mind buying those fresh herbs if I can use it down the road. That's good. I like that. Yeah. I have seen that where people will make kind of something that they freeze in ice cubes and freezing their herbs. Kind of make a mini broth that you freeze. Mm -hmm. I like yeah. that. I just like wash it, dry it, and then uh, wrap it in paper towel. That seems to kind of absorb the moisture in the freezer and then keeps it nice and flat. So that's my method, but oh, I'm not an great, expert. That's a <laughs> no, great that's idea great. too. That works especially well for the slightly hardier, like the rosemaries yes. and the, the more late season parsley that has a bigger leaf. Sometimes you get into trouble on the really delicate ones, uh, but those are such a pain anyways that I, I dodge them anyways. <laughs> Well, as we're talking about um, the holidays, another way to enjoy the holidays is you make all the rules. So for example, how you dress. So some people want to dress up for the holidays and for others, um, wearing Santa jammies is dressing up. Yes, oh, I love both traditions. I love like in the morning, staying in my jammies until we go to a family gathering. And, and then I, I do like to dress up because I feel like today, especially, we don't have a whole lot of reasons to get dressed up. Now, I don't do like a full cocktail dress or anything, but it's kind of fun uh, to, to put on something festive um, and hang with family. But you could certainly do it either way. You could say, hey, this year we're all dressing in our comfies or, hey, let's, let's dress up this year and make it a little more of event, an event. Maybe you light some candles and kind of make it feel like a little bit of a restaurant feel. But it's going to vary based on your family, your comfort level, and um, what you want the mood to be that day. Well, you're right. I think that with the pandemic, things have shifted. I remember when we were working remote for a period of time and I went to the grocery store, I was like, oh, I'm going to put some lipstick on. I'm going to the grocery <laughs> store because I hadn't dressed up yeah. for a while. And so it did feel like an occasion. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I was the same way. Um, and, you know, now having uh, kind of things opening back up again. I've had to like literally dust off some of my clothes <laughs> from hanging in my closet. Uh, but it has been fun to kind of get dressed up. But again, I think it's, it's nice to be able to be in our comfortable clothes, especially if you have an older loved one, you know, asking them what their comfort level is and then kind of maybe everyone else meeting, meeting the, the dress code that they set, if you will, could mm -hmm. make them feel a part of, uh, of the day and make sure that they're comfortable uh, in the celebration as well. Well, we have another question from the chat. It says, with aging parents and loved ones, how can we diplomatically take on more holiday responsibilities like cooking? That is, that is a really great question. I think that we're going through that in my family because my grandma still mm -hmm. loves to cook everything. I think maybe, you know, starting the conversation early, um, not, you know, the day before saying, hey, what can I bring or can I come over and help? But, you know, kind of laying the foundation now. We're about two weeks out from Thanksgiving. Um, so you can start to have the conversation, you know, mom or dad, I know you usually make the, the full meal. We would love to help this year. Or maybe it's not the, the cooking that is, you know, taxing. Maybe mom or dad really loves that but cleaning the house is getting yeah. overwhelming. So maybe you could say, we'd love to come over and help you clean. Maybe we'll pay for a cleaning service to come so that you can focus all on the food. Uh, there are a variety of ways uh, that you can offer up those services. Or you could say, you know, maybe this year we, we buy a pre-cooked turkey from the grocery store and then we all make a side, just again, to, to make it easier. Um, and I know sometimes the location of the holiday is mm -hmm. part of the tradition. Yeah. So for us, going to my grandma and grandpa's on Christmas Eve. We've done that since I was a kid. Um, so we don't want to change the location of that because that's really special. But I think you know this year and in the coming years, we're all going to chip in more. And I know we've kind of gone away from the tradition and we do soups. So every family brings nice. a soup and some appetizers. Um, and we really have a great celebration. And uh, it's more about the time together and less about uh, having to cook this big, huge holiday meal. We kind of leave that for Thanksgiving, <laughs> at least in my family. 
All right, Chef Chase, I see you've got the whisk out. What's happening? Right, so we're getting into kind of the wrapping up of the polonaise. So we got our carrots that they sauteed, a little bit of onion, salt, pepper. Uh, the chicken thighs went in just to sweat so they get a little tender. And then I sprinkled in flour, kind of thicken it up so we have our sauce, our integrated combined mm -hmm. sauce. And then I'm just holding a simmer here. So I'm just letting it kind of finish the cooking of those carrots. And then on the side here, I'm kind of adding all the flavors that I want to add uh, kind of last minute because I want them to be more vibrant. So I have some sour cream, a little spoon of Dijon, a little turmeric. I like integrating some spices kind of like turmeric and uh, just really whatever pairs well, especially the winter spice blends. Uh, because they have healthful benefits to them uh, and they kind of round out the flavor when it might feel flat otherwise. Uh, and then an egg to crack in here and that will kind of bring this together to feel more like a custardy base rather than kind of the, the chunky soup it is now. Well, you've got these beautiful colors going on too yeah. with the Absolutely. carrots and the stock you have in there. And then that turmeric seems like that would pair so well with the carrots. Yep. Uh, and then the orange just brings it all together. That you get a little spice, a little creaminess, a little sweetness from the carrots, and then the acidity, just a little bit, helps to kind of balance the whole dish. All of my favorite things. Excellent. <laughs> I love that you said the health benefits of turmeric. We know mm -hmm. from the aging process that turmeric helps to reduce inflammation. So yep. that might be a good spice if you have never used it before to try to incorporate um, into a few dishes uh, just to kind of help, help with that inflammation that sometimes we get as, as we age. I love, that. I, I love the, the um, diving into kind of healthy aging and those kinds of tips. There's so much that we can do um, from our food and, and our exercise standpoint that's good for our bodies and our brains. Um, that's been something that I've been studying a lot lately. It's, it's so, so fascinating. What we eat and how we kind of move our bodies really can help to kind of reduce risk for cognitive issues down the road. Uh, what's good for your heart's good for your brain, we're learning. so. Uh, there's a lot of great resources out there. I know on our website, homeinstead.com, we have a care resource section with tips on everything from kind of health and nutrition to kind of these uh, holiday topics that we're, we're speaking of. So if people want to learn more, they can certainly go to our website, homeinstead.com slash care dash resources to learn more. Well, Lakeland, you talked a little bit about exercise and how good it is for not just your heart, and, but also your brain. Yeah. And I read something recently that said exercise is so good for your brain because it forces blood up into your brain. Yes. And so just that really helps your cognitive ability. Oh, absolutely. I think I, I was talking with one researcher d physician and he said exercise is probably the best thing you can do for your brain health. Mm -hmm. and, and starting at an earlier age, that's even better. And when we talk about Thanksgiving meals, I know after the big meal, I usually want to get up and move around, go for a walk. So that could be a great kind of element to add to your holiday gathering. Or maybe you dance, like get some music going and everyone starts dancing. Uh, that's another great form of exercise that you could incorporate uh, into your holiday gathering that's not only good for uh, your, your body, but also good for your brain and good for socialization. It kind of hits all three. Absolutely. Well, as we're talking about simplifying, it's also a great time to look at really prioritizing what is important yes. to your family and maybe letting go some of those other things so we don't have to do everything. Yeah. I think, I think the pandemic's kind of helped us all reflect on what's really important uh, in life. And I think at the holiday time, that's another great time to think about, you know, what's really important. And I think for so many this year, especially as, as many more people are getting vaccinated and feeling more comfortable coming around others is we're getting to spend time together. And, and who cares if all the ornaments got on the tree? Uh, maybe only half of them get up this year. Or um, who cares if, if the cookies got decorated perfectly? As long as you're together and you're making memories, I think that uh, is kind of the most special of all. Uh, but I think it's also important to acknowledge that, you know, some older adults, they don't have family around. They don't have friends around, or maybe their, their friends and family have, have passed on, and so their social circle's kind of getting smaller and smaller. So I think even if we have older adults in our lives, like a neighbor or someone in our faith community that doesn't have people to share 
uh, the holidays with that we do something special for them. Maybe it's writing them a holiday card, bringing them some of those yummy leftovers or inviting them over for a meal, caroling at their house. I think that there's ways that we can reach out to those that might not also have a lot of family around this time of year. It seems like there are simple things that um, we can do that just make a big difference. Yeah. Yeah, and actually Home Instead has a really neat, a couple neat programs where people can make a difference. So first of all, we have our Be a Santa to a Senior program. Uh, it's happening right now, actually. You go to BeASantaToASenior.com and you can take an ornament with gifts for a senior that might not receive gifts this year and, and purchase those. Uh, and then we also have a, a Ready to Care program uh, where you can have text messages sent to you with random acts of kindness that you can do for an older adult, one of which is becoming a pen pal. Uh, so there's ways that you can give back. And of course, here in the city of Omaha, we have so many fantastic nonprofits that have opportunities for, for serving and giving. So I think that's another important aspect of the holiday season that we don't want to overlook. Well, Chef Chase, it looks like that gratin is coming together. Right? That the that cream egg sauce mixed in with our hot base that we thickened up nicely. So uh, you're kind of smelling that uh, creamy richness. The Aromax kind of evolved on you, right? So uh, I'm gonna finish this in the oven, just let it kind of tighten up and become that gratin that we know and love. And then we'll just finish it with the breadcrumbs after. Uh, this is kind of just an easy no frills pan. Like mm -hmm. if you're having this fluctuating uh, kind of whether you dress up or not, casual or not, what you're preparing and how you serve it can be scaled to that, right? Mm -hmm. That doing, bringing out the china and having extra place settings feels weird when you're in your PJs. <laughs> I mean, maybe you want to do that in balance kind of funness, but mm -hmm. also making less dishes is fun to me mm -hmm. that uh, you can just put it in the pan you make. If you had uh, kind of a, a Dutch oven pan, this would go great in that. You don't need to be using all this extra cleanup work that just no frills get the food out if it's delicious yeah. it's delicious oh and like it, it, we know that this is going to be delicious <laughs> we've talked a bit about just reminiscing and mm -hmm. how that's helpful as well um just thinking back on those good times so i just wanted to ask you lakeland and shift chase a favorite holiday memory oh wow there's so many do you have one that comes to mind right away? Right on the spot. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know if I can pull like one fun story out, but I know that most of my interaction with my kind of nuclear immediate family is my mother as the matriarch and mm -hmm. the kitchen manager. That uh, even though I'm a pro professional chef, when I go to her house, I'm still her komi, I'm her sous chef. I go, <laughs> what can I help you with? I'll chop this, do that that still allowing those patriarch matriarch roles mm. to be fulfilled uh, is meaningful that I don't want to go in and be the boss of the kitchen when I'm at her house like I do that every time else I'm in the kitchen that you allow that roles to maintain but you just balance the workload and I, you were talking about that earlier so mm -hmm. really it's just spending time side by side stove side in and out of the oven with her that uh, kind of punctuates what makes a holiday a holiday to me. I love that memory. Um, well, and for us in my family, we um, grew up in a very uh, spiritual family. And so before we could go to the Christmas tree to open presents Christmas morning, we would all pile in my parents' bed. And it was the only time of year the dog could get up on the bed with us. <laughs> and we would read the Christmas story from the Bible before we would go out. And it was just a reminder to us of the reason for the season. My mom wanted to make sure that that was important to us. And it's a tradition we all still do today. We don't all climb in the bed because we're all adults. <laughs> and we're, we have spouses now and they're like, this is kind of weird. Uh, but we gather still in my parents' bedroom. Some people are sitting on the floor, some on the bed. The family dog passed away, unfortunately, but the grand pups come over and they, they get to be in the room. And, um, and so it's still a neat tradition that we carry on. And it's one that uh, when, of course, when I was a kid, I'd be like, oh, read faster, read faster. We got to get to the presents. <laughs> but now as an adult, I really appreciate it. And, and it's those unique memories that I know stick with us. And as I uh, get married this year and, and start to have a family, I hope to carry on some of those holiday traditions. Uh, into our own family. That's great. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's a really great time to reflect about what what made those holidays special, and mm -hmm. it's really the relationships and, and who you're spending time with. It absolutely is. 
So um, I asked you guys, and, and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. Please. Please. Yeah. yours. What's you my it. favorite memory? <laughs> I guess one of my favorite memories is when my children were very little. I think they were about one, three, and six. I don't know where I was. I found this kind of uh, Santa shoe print stencil. Mm. And so I thought it'd be fun. I sprinkled baking powder on the floor or baking soda. And, um, and so the kids came and it, it looked like Santa's footprints were walking <laughs> to the tree. That's and right. so they were jumping up and down and screaming, <laughs> Santa was here. <laughs> And then because it was baking soda, as they jumped it up and down, it went into the carpet. Oh, no. And so they said, like magic! <laughs> and so it was just a really fun, oh. unexpected memory. Oh, I love I mean, it was that. like I wasn't expecting them to be so excited and then the, the uh, baking soda disappearing into the carpet <laughs> magically. Oh, that's a really sweet memory. I think that, again, the reminiscing part of the holidays is so fun. Um, you know, sharing stories like that, I know, in our larger family, uh, when we sit around, my, my dad and his uncles tell stories of when they were really naughty, when they were <laughs> kids. Uh, and my grandma just sits there and shakes her head like, I had no idea that happened, but I'm glad I didn't know until now. Um, so it, it's, it is so fun. And you can pull out old pictures, um, you know, or, um, you know, just you know, mementos. Or as I know in our family, we love to collect ornaments from places that we've been. So as we're decorating the tree, we'll mm -hmm. say, oh, remember this ornament? We got this on this family vacation. So there's just so many opportunities to share, share those memories. And, uh, and sometimes, you know, sharing memories do involve loved ones that have passed on. And so it can be a nice time of year to also kind of memorialize them, uh, maybe visit their gravesite, maybe light a candle in their honor, uh, maybe observe kind of a moment of silence as a family for that person. So there's ways to, you know, uh, celebrate those happy memories along with some of those more maybe sad memories too. That's great. I think of those traditions as things that we're pulling from the past, but as people come and go in the family that the traditions need to evolve and often memorializing that change is a big part of making the new traditions. Yeah, and it keeps their spirit alive too amongst Absolutely. the family. Absolutely, it's that legacy that mm -hmm. gets passed down. Yeah, absolutely. Legacy, legacy is, I think, something um, that so many people are um, in tune with. They want to kind of leave that legacy. They want their family members um, to carry on some of those traditions. And so, I think it's also a great time of year to express gratitude to your aging loved one. Let them know. I mean, you often hear people at, at funerals, you know, talking about their loved one and how wonderful they were, but if they're still alive, let them know now. Let, yeah, exactly, <laughs> let them know now. So it can be a great time to also kind of give thanks for one another uh, and express gratitude in those ways, which I think is special. And there's so many different ways to express gratitude, whether it's mm -hmm. telling someone, whether it's a card. Some people like gratitude jars where everybody yes. puts in something that they're grateful for. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have a gratitude journal that I write in regularly throughout the year. I think when we uh, express gratitude, it's, uh, it, it infuses kind of positivity and it just makes us focus on the positive things happening in our lives, which at times can be kind of hard to focus on. Um, and so having those little gratitude practices can be really uh, impactful. That's great. And that could be really helpful with a loved one too, because as you mentioned, it's a different people are going through different things at this time of year. Yeah. Some sad, not happy all the time. And so that yeah. gratitude piece can really be helpful. Absolutely, because I think you can be, you know, thankful even in times of sadness, or you can, uh, it can also bring about conversations too, I think, which uh, is what we started talking about at, at the start of this, uh, this hour is, you know, bringing about those conversations. And um, there's so many conversations that we can, we can have with loved ones this time of year, whether it's gratitude, whether it's uh, planning, whether it's asking for help. Um, I think this time of year is a great time to, to have those important conversations. And it's a really great time to be intergener to be intentional about the generations yes. coming together. Yes, intergenerational connection. There's just something magical that happens when you get people of different generations together, especially older adults with young children. Um, and so any opportunity to bring all those uh, generations of your family together for an activity or a celebration can be really special. I know um, for my grandma, when, when the grandkids are around the great grandkids, she just lights up. Uh, and she uh, really just values that time more than anything. So I know we haven't talked about holiday gift giving yet, but mm -hmm. sometimes just giving time uh, is greater than any sort of trinket or 
memento that you could give your loved one. Uh, so maybe thinking about giving them an experience uh, or creating an experience can be almost more meaningful than any other gift. Right. And it's free. And it's what yeah. people appreciate is the, the relational aspect mm -hmm. of things. Most certainly. Okay, Chef Chase, what do you have going on there? Is, is, are these the aromatics? I see we've got, right. is that cur cranberries? Mm-hmm, right. That I read your brain a little bit on that one. <laughs> yes, uh, cranberries. So uh, now is kind of the, the easy time, right? This is the time that everything gets in the oven and then the guests come over and you're sitting down, having a drink, uh, relaxing, talking, and they're like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna go grab the food and we're all ready to go. <laughs> so this is just the stuff that I'm gonna sprinkle on last second. Give a little, uh, of course, flavor, but then also it has beautiful color. Finished breadcrumbs, the chicken's in the oven, the polonaise is in the oven, and really it's just pull out and dish up, whether that's family style or plated, whatever you want. So yeah, I'm almost done. Wow. And you guys are about to eat. Yay, Ooh. we're super this excited. Is, this is the fun part. <laughs> this is the best part. So I have a question for you about Thanksgiving. How early is too early to start cooking? Oh, so uh, I would say over a week is too early, which might surprise a lot of people. Like there's so much you can do ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Nothing's going to happen to it over that next week. Of course, there's some things that won't do as well over a week. Uh, but for the most part, ahead of time, that's a professional rule that when you go to order something at a restaurant, they're not going from absolute scratch to finished dish. Yeah. Like right when you order it, that they make it ahead of time and they just finish it, season it, give it a little nudge, heat it up, and then it's delicious. So uh, really bulking up ahead, doing a lot of that work the days leading up, and then maybe take a whole day off. Recoup, mm -hmm. uh, do something fun, and then kind of just have all your stuff ready to go. Uh, that also, so many people stress about timing everything to uh, the moment when everyone sits down. And really, food can be held warm really well. So don't have that turkey come out and be like, all right, it needs to go to the table. Have the turkey come out and then rest for a while. It'll be way better and way less stressful. You just rest it for the over an hour is great because they roast for so long. Mm -hmm. Well, I need your professional opinion because what I typically do <laughs> mm -hmm. is I typically stay up the night before <laughs> and I cook mostly everything. It's kind of like a fun little tradition I do. Uh -huh. I cook almost everything. I finish it the next day, but I put the turkey in last. And so the turkey is done. You know, I, it's kind of cooking overnight. But I told my sister, you know, I'm thinking maybe there's some things I can make ahead of time, like a, like a week ahead of time and freeze them. And she said, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> I disagree with your sister. But it also sounds like you're kind of a crammer when you were in school, like study all night and then take the test. <laughs> well, it's just kind of like a, I just find it fun to, you know, listen to holiday music and True. cook. Especially if you make it into an event that yeah. maybe different people are cycling in and out, helping you. Uh, but that could be a burden. So sprinkling that same event where it's more manageable uh, is just accomplishable in a way that some people get stressed at that like ticking time bomb of the, the service, the guests getting there. So I'm a big fan of cooking ahead of time, maybe not freezing everything. Uh, that does change a bit, but it can sit in the cooler for a day, maybe two. Yeah. That's a great tip because I'm like you. I. I kind of want to get it all done at the end, and my goal is always to get it all warm and out of the oven all at the same time. Yes. And so I'm going to start practicing that tip of preparing more ahead of time. Yeah. That's a great, great tip. So I think that what I'm hearing is that you and I need to um, not aim for perfection, yes. is what I'm hearing. <laughs> We're trying to have the perfect timing, you know, and so may maybe we just need to uh, do that. Yeah, I like that idea. We can get together after this and, and strategize how we're gonna make it more manageable. Mm. Ooh, I can I can hear the sizzle. Right, it so good. It's uh. like it's there's the sizzle. There's this bubbling of the custard. Mm -hmm. There's this wonderful garlic wafting through yes. the air. That garlic and that citrus that we talked about before. And if you just look at it, it's just pretty. Mm -hmm. uh, you also remind me of something my mother taught me. Uh, and it has done me well through my professional career is uh, never cook something for the first time for someone who matters, right? Oh. Uh, don't pull this new recipe out that you've <laughs> never done and then like stumble through it and regret it. 
Do something that you're comfortable with, mm -hmm. that is traditional, that you've done every year. Or maybe you tried a few weeks ago because you did want to do a different spin. Don't do that last second. That's stressful to everyone. That is fantastic advice. That is. She's good at that. Yeah, so you ha you'll have to tell Mama Grove that we said thank you for that. <laughs> Will do. <laughs> Wonderful advice. And so you're plating this up in this beautiful dish as well. It's just aesthetically, everything yes. looks good. It smells good. There's this variety of textures and seasonings and flavors. I mean, it, it just looks amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Almost done. Yep, very excited to uh, get to try that. So with the holidays this season, I think what I'm hearing you say, Lakeland, is just, just take it easy. Yeah. And just relax and enjoy it. Yes, give yourself a little grace. Uh, I like chef's tip, you know, spread it out. Um, you know, you don't have to do everything on the exact holiday. I think that's another mm -hmm. great tip is people are often, you know, you're, especially with multiple families coordinating schedules, um, it might be hard to get everyone together on the actual holiday. But the great thing is, is celebrate all week. You know, you could sprinkle in those holiday gatherings so you're not uh, trying to cram it all in in one day. So give yourself a little grace and things don't have to be perfect. You can ask for, for help and, um, and it'll make it more enjoyable, I think, I think for everyone. Right, and I love that tip that you said earlier just about um, accepting people where they are mm -hmm. in the moment. Yeah. So it might not be exactly as it was in the past, yeah. but just where they are right now. Yeah, I think sometimes it's hard to give up those traditions um, that maybe you've had all of your, your childhood or adult life or, um, but there, it's ways we can hopefully modify those activities. So, you know, maybe if uh, your loved one can't go with you to pick out the Christmas tree, you know, utilize FaceTime, you know, get their input as you're walking around or once they get home, maybe then that's an opportunity for them to help dress the tree. Um, just kind of modifying those, those things uh, to make it more manageable and still involve the person. Um, there's so many great holiday activities that, that surround these upcoming holidays uh, that hopefully uh, a few Google searches can help give you some, some great ideas for that. And just, it's a great opportunity to focus on making some new traditions. Yes. Well, I think we're getting close. Right. Mm. So I did plate up one, uh, and this could be an individual serving. That, that's a, a little bit kind of your stuffing, a little bit of your cranberry mm -hmm. sauce, a little bit of your gratin, a little bit of your turkey, kind of all changed to be a more accomplishable dish. Uh, or you could do the exact same thing as a big platter and then everyone just pulls from rather than having a thousand dishes. Yeah. So uh, you guys can enjoy. I'll dish up more for everyone in the crew. But uh, thank you so much for allowing me to cook for you guys. Thank you thank so you. much. And I'd like to mention um, we will continue our Home Instead Aging Well series next month with all things holiday and all things of what are we going to do um, keeping everyone happy and safe during this very special season. I'd like to thank Chef Chase Grove for this delicious, beautiful meal that you've made. And Lakeland Hoagland from Home Instead, thank you so much for just the wealth of information that you provided. I will be taking both your expert opinions with me <laughs> this holiday season. Thank you. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time on the Home Instead Aging Well series.